If you're brand new to fighting games or Tekken in general, you probably don't know what the term punish means or what it entails, but you've probably heard it flown around by community members left, right, and center. Oh, this is launch punishable. Oh, this is jab punishable. This is safe on block, therefore it's not punishable. That kind of terminology is used on a regular basis by pretty much everybody in the community, whether it be Tekken, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, or any of the lesser known fighting games. It's uh, a very common term. It's something that everybody needs to learn. How to punish, what moves are punishable, how punishable exactly are those moves, and what your character is able to get whenever they do a punish. In the last video we went over frame data and what that entails, so I shouldn't have to explain frames too much in this video, but I'm going to be talking about those quite a bit here because punishment pertains to frames. But let's go through some punishable moves uh, with Zafina real quick. I thought Zafina would be a pretty interesting character to go over because uh, I don't really know a whole shit ton about this matchup and I figured I'd teach myself something while I did this video and maybe teach everybody else something too because who the fuck knows the Zafina matchup? So, anyways, let's get Zafina to do the strings that I have programmed for her to do. So, and just pay attention to the frame data on my side there. Look at the frame advantage on Kazuya's side and then on Zafina's side. You'll see right there it says minus 11 on the bottom left where, Ka uh, where sorry, Zafina's uh, frame data box is. That means that I get this for free, at least. If you're using another character, you'll probably just get that. Most characters don't have an 11 frame punish. Most of the time when you see something on the, on the screen that it says minus 11, you're gonna just wanna go with the jab punish. It's quick and easy and, you know, it's the first thing that comes to mind. What I recommend learning when you want to learn how to punish something is, mm, I'm gonna say four basic moves that your character has. Every character has this. Learn your jab punish from standing, your launch punish from standing, which is also gonna be used to whiff punish moves. So. Uh, although some characters have moves that are specifically good for with punishing, not necessarily good for block punishing. Uh, like Kazuya has, uh, obviously, the electric. Like, that move is, is great for with punishing, but it's not at all good for... I mean, it's fantastic for stab block punishing if you're able to execute the move properly, but because electric is hard to do anyways, launching a minus 15 on block move consistently with electric every time is uh, it's probably never going to happen. Like, even if your execution is perfect. So, don't rely on electrics. Uh, characters have other amazing 15 frame launchers as well, instead of electrics. So, you know, Zafina has down forward 2, for example. Uh, most characters have a down forward 2 that launches, or a hop kick that launches, or something along those lines. And most of those moves, the vast, vast majority, are 15 frames to impact, 15 startup frames. That's a pretty universal rule as far as launchers go. The other punishment tools you're going to need to know are your while standing punishes. You want to know one that's really quick, just fast, usually a while standing four. While standing four is most of the time going to be your fastest punish from uh, a while standing position when you block crouched moves, right? So we're going to do a string with Zafina real quick where she's going to end the string in a low, and that low is going to be launch punishable which is why it's very important to know what moves your character has from while standing position that launch on hit, right? So you want your while standing launcher uh, to uh, to be locked into your memory banks. So for at all times, because if you get hit with this shit, you get a launch. But if you're too late for the launch, she can duck under it with the mantis stance that you just saw there, right? So if I wanted to, re let's restart that real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go for the punish. I'm kind of like all over the fucking place with explaining this, but just bear with me because I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie it all together by the end of the video. So just, just hang tight. All right. So she's gonna do this shit. And I'm gonna punish it. See that? It says punish on the right there. Where, well, on my side of the screen, right below me, right about fucking there, where I, when I went to do this. There you go. While standing two, that's a punish, and guess what? She's launched for big ass damage now. So if I wanted to, I could get some cool shit, you know? And into the Oki shit, you know? So, there's... There's that. I don't need you to do that anymore, so chill out. Uh... That's my launch punish from a while standing position. 
So when you're just learning punishing at the very beginning, when you're just figuring out how to punish, all you need to know is your jab punish, your launch from a from a standing position. It'll probably be like a down forward two or a hop kick or something, something along those lines. But when you're just learning punishment, you only want to know at the very beginning before you really start challenging yourself and overloading your brain with too much information at once. Just try to figure out your jab punish. Whatever your standing launcher may be, your fastest while standing punish, and then whatever your while standing launcher is. Okay, so those four moves. Reason being, because jab punish is going to work for a lot more moves than you think it will. While standing punishes that are super, super quick, again, almost every single low in the game is at least minus 12 on block, which means that Kazuya's 11 frame while standing four, natural combo, natural two hit combo, so a natural combo, by the way, is a, a string of moves, a string of attacks, uh, that if the first initial attack connects, the rest of the string is guaranteed as long as you input the whole thing, right? So if I wanted to, I could just input while standing four. But if I want to get the damage, I get while standing 4-4, four, four, and the second 4 is also guaranteed, because that string is a natural combo. Same thing with jabs like this. The 1-2, that second hit, the 2, is a natural combo. Even though I'm not technically, you know, it's not a combo in Tekken, because in Tekken combos are, again, when you launch the opponent into the air and then combo them for big damage. That's a combo in Tekken specifically, but a natural combo is this shit. Right? That's why this is a good jab punish, because this is a natural combo. If I wanted to figure out what a natural combo is, then I would turn, as my first action, I'd put it to standing, and then I would put the second action of my uh, opponent when they're, when, after they've hit or blocked something, or they've been hit, sorry, uh, I would put that action to block all. You, you can do that in this menu right here, practice settings, go to training mood, switch that to offense, and then do what I just explained. But I'm not gonna do that because, again, I don't feel like reprogramming all these fucking moves. So, let's just leave that alone. And uh, you'd be able to find out real quick what moves your character has that are actual true natural combos and what, what strings they have that are blockable by the third or fourth hit. Most of the time, if a string is three or four hits, the third hit is usually where people can start blocking. This is an exception to that rule. Same with this. Those are both jab punishes that Kazuya gets. This is decent for plus frames. He's at plus four there. Again, plus four is really fucking good. It's for momentum building. But I'd rather get the knockdown with Kazuya because then you get the fucking vortex, right? So, you want to know what your jab punish is because maybe you get some sick shit like that, right? Kazuya's got a crazy good jab punish. Maybe one of the best in the game. I'd say Lee probably has the best jab punish, but his execution on that jab punish is extremely difficult. So you, you, you're, you might drop the jab punish half the time but it's probably the best one in the game if you can do it consistently. Some people only, or some characters, by people I mean characters, some characters only have this, which is still great, because look at that shit, you get plus eight there. Plus eight on hit, which means it's, it's still my turn after that. You know, like, I, I get to not only take my turn, but I can do some crazy shit after that that's, you know, otherwise, Big ass moves that can be easily interrupted aren't so interrupted anymore. Because again, we talked about frames last time. You know why that is. So jab punish, super important to know. Figure out what your character's is, and then abuse the shit out of it whenever you think it's maybe your turn. Just go in for a jab. Jab string like that. You get guaranteed damage and plus frames for momentum. So why the hell would you not take the free damage? Uh, for your launches, you know, like if you're if you're gonna launch the opponent then you, you better be sure what, uh, what 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 your launcher actually is, because most launchers are punishable on block themselves. So you better be sure that your opponent is minus 15 exactly. I can give you an example of, of a move where they are minus 15. Everybody is minus 15 uh, for this shit. But here we go. So if you want to block the rage arts, everybody's minus 15. Let's see if I can get a... a no, didn't get the electric on minus 15. Let's see if I can get it here. Nope, because you cannot buffer electrics. We'll go over what buffering means in a future video. <clears throat> but look at this. Uh, you know, Rage Arts are not actually that good. But I, I can't fucking electric it consistently because her... her the, the, the recovery frames are all wonky. Her recovery frames after the 
Rage Art re starts recovering. I'm not sure when to start inputting the forward because I don't know when she begins recovering from the Rage Art, so I seem to be whiffing this a lot. So that's why Electric for uh, 15 frame launch punish is not necessarily the best idea. Instead, Kazi is going to do something like this. And then go into, uh, you know, heat and all that shit. But that's just another reason why Kazi is so hard to play is because of the fucking. He has no standard 15 frame launcher from standing. So there you go. You want your jab punish, your fastest while standing punish, your while standing launcher, and then your uh, standing uh, launcher, whatever that may be. Right? So, and usually they're going to be either down forward twos or hop kicks, which is an up forward four most of the time. Right? Uh, that's what a hop kick is called. Anybody that's got a move where you kick someone in the air and you jump while you're doing it, that's a 15 frame hop kick. Most of them are 15 frames. So there are a couple of exceptions. Reyna's got a 17 frame one. I think Asuka's is also 17 or 18 frames. Uh, but the vast majority, like Steve's got like a 23 frame hop kick, so it's pretty much useless. Uh, the vast majority are 15 frames and will launch people uh, that are minus 15 on block. So. Rage Arts. When you block a Rage Art, hop kick them to death. You know, by the time you hop kick them, then you do your combo and you're where you go. You've just punished the person doing the Rage Art that you then blocked, reacted in time, and said, oh shit, I get my launch punish for this because that's how unsafe they are. Now it's my turn. Now you need to know the rhythm. Again, with Tekken comes rhythm. How the fuck? Do I know when exactly to press the button? Can I just mash the bitch out? With most moves, actually, kinda, yeah, you can mash it out. So I'm gonna get Zafina real quick to do a string that's minus 10, and then I'll just get a jab punish for that. So let's just do this real quick. So that's uh, minus 10 on block, right? So I'm gonna record this movement, and I'm gonna get her to do it real quick. Okay, I was too late. I was too late with the rhythm there. See, that's a natural combo, so if I'm hit with the first hit, then the second one's guaranteed. There you go, I got the punish that time. So if you're just a little bit off... Oh, that's the wrong move. Oh, I have a different one on. Okay. I'm gonna use that as a different example later. But if you're just a little bit off of the timing of this of the punish, then you're going... It's gonna be... It's, uh... Sorry, I'm not holding back. It's gonna whiff. But that was a perfect punish, it's on time, so you understand the rhythm of when that attack is finished. If you understand the rhythm, you're able to get consistent jab punishes off of moves that are minus 10, minus 11, minus 12, stuff like that. See, I was late with the punish, and I still... Well, I figured out. I thought I was late. Turns out I still got it in time. Let's try to be a little bit late on purpose to see what happens. I still got it in time. The rhythm's just too built into my muscles. There we go. I was a tiny bit late there, and we see that I did not get the punish. It did not show up as punished there, which means my opponent had the ability to block at that point. They could have blocked that jab punish. So you do have to be on point, and you do have to understand the recovery frames of, of animations and the rhythm of how a punish works. You pretty much only, you just do that by practicing it yourself, because I don't know what fucking character you're using. I use Kazuga, I use Devil Jin, I use Reina, and I use Steve. Those are my fucking four guys. Eventually, if they add them, I'll, I'll use Armor King as well. Uh, when they add Heihachi, because you fucking know he's coming as DLC, they better add Heihachi. Come on, Bamco, please give us Heihachi. He's, I know he's dead in the lore, but he's my second main. I need the guy back. So, uh, Heihachi, and I'll probably fuck around with Lei a little bit, who has terrible punishment. He's an example of a character who's got absolute trash punishment. Kazuya is the king of punishment. So you you kind of you want to find a character that's uh, not overcomplicated. Kazuya has too many options, but you do want one that can make things fairly easy for you, make life a little bit simpler. Like a king has great while standing punishment and decent standing punishment. You know, King's a great uh, uh, character to use if you want to practice punishment. Uh, Paul is another one. Dragonov is ridiculous with his punishment. So, you know, there's uh, a whole bunch of characters that have fantastic punishment in the game, and everybody is different. And you do need to practice the rhythm of when to get a punish exactly, but once you understand it, and you've gotten it a couple of times, it's gonna come to you every single time online, and, it, and you won't even have to think about it really anymore. What you'll have to think about then is identifying a move that you know is unsafe and then 
cluing into the fact that that move has just been done, and it's your turn now, and you can retaliate with a punish if you get it in time. Like, say they just did a hop kick. That's been blocked now. Oh shit, they're minus 13, because every hop kick is minus 13, so Kazuya gets this shit. Or he gets this shit. Or he gets this shit. Because this is 13 frames on startup. This move is 13 frames. So if something is minus 13, then I get this string guaranteed. And now I'm in heat, and now you're fucked up. You know, I also get this, because it's 11 frames. This frame is a natch, or this move, sorry. Back one starts at 11 frames. So if they're minus 10, I won't get this. Like, let's, uh, let's see what happens. I didn't get the punch. She's not blocking right now because of the piece, or it's the CPU doing its thing. But if I wanted to do this in an actual match, this would be blocked. If they were holding block, obviously. Because, like you see there, I never get the punish. It's 11 frames. But I have to punish there because that's only 10 frames. So, you do need to learn the timing and the rhythm. That's important. Just practice that on your own time, and before you know it, you'll have it. So what about a move that's unsafe, but it's got a really wonky recovery frame, so it's really difficult to know when the animation is over and when to appropriately input the punish. Zafin has got a move like that that's really irritating to me. It's like this shit right here. Down forward four two. Like, I... Having a to, ha, to knowing exactly when to punish this fucking move is bullshit. And sometimes she hits you a tip rage and, the, and your punish whips. So that's why you gotta go for some longer range punishes. It's down back one. You gotta find out what yours is. So all characters have a long range punish. Uh, so in that sense, with this move, the frames are so wonky. That I'm mashing one long before the jab actually comes out. This is minus 13, but it's not launch or it's not jab punishable because Kazuya's jabs whiff at least. Some characters in the game have longer jabs and they can actually punish this with their jab punish. Kazuya doesn't even get back one from this, and that's his best. So basically, what I'm saying is Zafina players abuse down forward four two against Kazuya. He can only punish it with his heat engager. So, uh, you know. I don't know, that's a pretty, pretty big reason not to abuse a move against Kazuya, actually, because no one wants to get hit with that move, but still, you know, use that move against the Kazuya because odds are they're going to go through this shit and go for this shit more often than they're going to go for their 13 frame punishes just because a lot more shit is susceptible to jab punish and, you know, minus 11 punish. There's a lot of moves in the game that are minus 12. Okay, most mids, I will tell you as a universal rule, most mids that you see in the game are going to be minus 12. This move right here, Kazuya's homing down forward two, launches on counter hit, fantastic move, only 14 frames fast. What's what's the downside? That, that move doesn't look like it has any downside. It's, it's minus 12. So you still get a jab punish for that because jabs are only 10 frames. So minus 12, obviously you get a 10 frame thing for, for free. But you also get 12 frames, up to 12 frames. And a lot of characters have really fucking strong 12 frame punishes. Kazuya's is 11. This shit does more damage than the jab punish, but it's crap for Oki. You don't want to use that if you want to go for Okazemi after. You want to do this if you want some Oki to add for pressure. Because the recovery is so quickly... You know, I'm right in his face. If I want, if I actually wave dash properly, I'm right in his fucking face. And now he's got to deal with my shit. That's what you want to also look for. What's the best punish? Maybe my character has multiple options from jabs. But what's the jab punish that I would like to use more often? Maybe it's a little more damaging, or, or whatever it may be. I'm gonna go for this punish more often than I'm gonna go for this shit. Even if a move is minus 11 or more, I'm still not gonna use this too often, because this is so scary for Kazuya. It does less damage, but in the end, because of the crazy Okazemi you get, which I explained in the last video, this fucking shit is crazy. It is so fucking good. So let's quickly go over frames one more time, uh, just really briefly, just to know exactly what you're able to do at what frame advantage or disadvantage, when things are typically launch punishable, jab punishable, whatever, and I'm going to even include when it's appropriate to try things like sidestepping. So plus one or more, you're, you're at advantage all the time, it's all good, 
Uh, the more plus you are, the better you are. The more plus a move is on block, the better it is. So if you find a move that's plus three or plus four, bu abuse the fucking shit out of that move. Uh, zero, then you're both in the neutral. We're good. Either player can attack. What? Minus one and minus three, you're still fine. You can mass shit. You know, you don't have advantage. Uh, but you can certainly do other shit. You can sidestep whatever the fuck you want, you can duck anytime you want, you can backdash, and you can certainly uh, try to retaliate with actual attacks, because even if you're minus three, you're still not that un you're not that unsafe. So, uh, minus four to minus six is when things get a little more scary. Uh, you're not recommended to press any buttons here, sidestepping becomes a much trickier time. Uh, you can still sidestep fairly consistently at minus four, minus five, Depending on the move that the player throws out, some moves track really well to both sides, so you, 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 you know, and they could be really fast, so minus four might fuck you over there. Minus six is quite likely to fuck you over there, but for the most part, uh, big swings that they're going to throw at you when you're that minus uh, are going to whiff if you attempt a sidestep. Uh, at minus seven to minus nine, your turn is definitively over until your opponent retaliates or does nothing. Sidestepping here is very difficult, but you can still work against big linear attacks. So what I said about minus six applies even more to minus seven, minus eight, and at minus nine, just stand block. Stand or crouch block, because sidestepping at that point, it almost doesn't matter what your opponent throws at you, you're gonna have a hard time trying to sidestep shit. So minus seven to minus nine, your best option at that point, pretty much universally, there are of course exceptions to this rule, but your best options are to stand guard, right? Uh, minus 10 is the first time that you're officially unsafe. Unsafe and may eat a jab punish for free, but the only thing they can give you is a jab punish. Anything else, anything stronger than a jab or a jab punish uh, will be blocked if you're holding the block button. Remember to fucking block. I know this is a series for beginners, so I have to note that quite often. Minus 14, or sorry, minus 11 to minus 14, you're quite unsafe. And it's very easy for your opponent to get a punish stronger than their jab punish on you. Because obviously they have more frames to visualize, uh, visually confirm what it is that just occurred, right? If an exchange happens that puts you at minus 11, or even worse, minus 13, 14, whatever, then they have more time to visually confirm that, oh yeah, this guy just blocked that shit, or I just, you know, I just blocked the big ass move that he did, so now I get to retaliate, and because... He's got more frames to work with, it's easier to identify, like a hop kick being minus 13, pretty easy to punish those things on reaction. So, you've got a long time to react. you got the entire animation of the hop kick, and then the minus 13 frames on top of it. So, you, you have forever and a day to confirm that a hop kick is punished, or, or is that it was just thrown out and then you can punish it. But uh, even that takes some practice, so don't beat yourself up if you can't launch a hop kick consistently after two or three weeks of doing this. Give yourself a few months of, of consistent punishment practice in in real time, in real matches, and you'll you'll eventually get hop kicks punished every fucking time for free. And then minus 15 or more, this is a danger zone. Don't, you know, try to try not to try to avoid these big ass moves. Most of the time the moves that you're going to be doing that are minus 15 or more are massive fucking moves that do a lot of damage. So uh, you're launch punishable at this point. You're not just unsafe, you're not just jab punishable. You are launch punishable. You are the most punishable that you could possibly be in this game. So, you'll most likely eat a massive combo and be taken to the wall for added pressure. So you're gonna eat a shit ton of damage, you're gonna be at the wall, because they're gonna wall carry you all the way there, and then you're gonna be stuck there with the fucking dude that just beat the shit out of you, standing in your face, throwing up a whole bunch of more plus frame attacks at you, and now you're wondering why the hell you lose all the time. Well, you just ate... Uh, you just did a move that was minus 15 on block, and they launched you for it, and now they're gonna kill you for it. That's that's why you gotta try to avoid these moves. Don't forego them entirely, because some of your best moves are minus 15. Like your Rage Art, for example, minus 15. But don't avoid using Rage Arts, use them. Just use them more wisely. Make sure that you're going to connect with it if you're gonna throw it out. That's something that comes with experience. It's called a hard read, right? Because you don't want your opponent fucking you up by punishing you from uh, them blocking your Rage Art, because you're pretty much going to be dead at that point, since you have no health when you have access to Rage Arts anyways. So, uh, there you go. That's the summary for the frames and when punishes are, when you are susceptible to punish, or when your opponent is susceptible to you punishing them. These are the frames that you need to keep in mind. One of the last things I want to discuss real quick is uh, sometimes a move or a string can look like it's safe, 
and give you the, uh, you know, the added illusion of it being safe. We're gonna do, uh, let's do, uh, something with Zafina real quick. Yeah, I think this is the move with Zafina, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna go here, and she's gonna perform a move that is a high, a mid-high. So you see it there? This is actually only minus six on block for Zafina, right? So it looks like it's perfectly safe. She's good here. Minus six, not terrible. She could potentially still sidestep a big move if I were to do it. Well, not that one, but, you know, sidestep a big move like this. She could totally sidestep that or interrupt it or something, right? Because minus six, no big deal. But the kicker is, this is actually fake safe. It's not safe on block. Uh, well, sorry, it's not safe the way you think it is. It's susceptible to duck and launch punish. That's a very difficult tactic. I don't recommend people learn this tactic uh, right off the bat. You're going to overload your brain when you're just trying to learn how to punish, and you'll just throw yourself off completely, and, and it will not be a pleasant experience for you, so just try to take it baby steps at a time, you know. But this move can be punished, even though it says it's minus six, and that's because I can duck it. Yeah, it says punish there on the screen, so I even got my launcher off. That's how unsafe it is. It's crazy unsafe. I even got a while standing three off. Obviously it's unsafe to while standing four, but if you duck this shit in time, which means you need to have crazy reaction skills, because the first move is 13 frames, and then the second move comes out at 19 frames. So you have about 33 frames or 32 frames to react, because it says 19 to 20 frames there. It could come out at 20 frames, and if, it's, if that's the case, then you, know, you have about 33 frames to react. But, you know, typically, 30, 32, 33, those, that, that level of frame is so easy to react to. It looks intimidating because that kick is so fast, but off of a down forward one, I don't think she has a mid extension. I, I think she might actually have a mid extension. Uh, she has down forward one, two. Fuck, I don't know. What does she have? So down forward one, four. Yeah, she's got down forward one, two, one. Let's see what that is on block. That's minus 13, right? So, if that's the case, maybe you don't necessarily want to duck the down forward 1-4 and then launch her for it, but at the same time, you need to understand what your game plan is going to be according to what your opponent is doing. Don't just say, alright, I'm fighting this character, and so because I know she has this set of moves, I'm never going to duck this string even though it's a high and I could launch her for it. You're, you want to make sure that you fully understand the matchup in terms of what's happening on screen. So if your opponent is giving you a reason to duck after the down forward one comes out, then you should duck and launch punish. If she's constantly throwing out down forward one four at you, then fucking duck it and launch her forward. Make sure she decides to switch it up to down forward one two after that. You know, because at that point then she can hit you with a mid and then your duck will be absorbed and you'll be you'll be fucked up for it. So, and that's counterplay. That's how we play Tekken. That's how we, that's the dance that's involved in this game. You know, oh, you did that? Well, I'm gonna do this. That's the answer to that. Oh, well, I have the answer to this. So let's fucking keep going for the, you know, pretty much nothing beats everything in this game except for Rage Arts. And even then, you could still launch a Rage Art on block. So really, at the end of the day, not even Rage Arts are invincible. Keep this shit in mind as far as the Duck Punish shit goes, but don't worry about necessarily learning how to do that yet. Uh, we'll talk about sidesteps and sidestep punishing in a later video, but the duck punishing thing was something I wanted to really quickly go over because it is going to be important to know for the future. Duck punishing, and I don't mean just fucking going around shooting a bunch of ducks for being ducks. I'm talking about actual ducking and punishing via a launcher is, is one of the most important tools to know in Tekken. Uh, and it makes otherwise broken-ass strings, like that shit that, well, I don't know, maybe Jack has thrown out a whole fucking bunch of strings at you, you've never seen any of them before, you, you don't know how to appropriately deal with most of them. Well, I'll tell you right off the bat, the ones that he does when he's in heat and he's trying to hit you with his heat, uh, his heat smash, uh, the vast majority of those strings are high, so you can just duck the second hit in the string and then launch him for it. So there you go, there's a little bit of Jack uh, information that can save your life in uh, later matches in case people are getting fucked up by it. So, hope this video helped. We're gonna talk more about punishing uh, punishment a little bit in uh, later videos, I'm sure, because punishing is, uh, punishment is the most important thing in Tekken, in my opinion, uh, and it's, uh, it's absolutely crucial to know. So you do need to know frame data for this, 
And then once you understand that, you do have to have some sort of matchup knowledge involved in your game plan. Uh, and then once you've got that, then uh, then you can start punishing people. So work up to it. It's it's something that eventually comes to you. It's not going to just magically appear. It's not like oh you know I I, I learned how to throw today. You know this is going to come to you right off the bat. Day one of playing Tekken, you will know how to throw. But day 69 of playing Tekken, you probably still won't be able to pr uh, properly uh, block punish. It takes time. But you will get there eventually if you allow yourself the uh, the time and the patience to do so. So stick with it, and you're uh, going to have a blast, and your results will be yielded within six, seven, eight months. I, I guarantee it. Uh, anyways, hope this video helped. Keep rocking out, keep gaming. Subscribe, like, share this video around, and I'll see you in the next one. Coming out, uh, well, as soon as ASAP as possible.